Okay, this is the um, video for the homework for chapter 11. So let's look at that. So in chapter 11 here, we're doing 2, 3, 6, 7, and 8. Okay. So this is all about cost of living. So let's look at number 2 here. Residents of Vegopia. I'm guessing it's because they're vegetarians. They spend their income on cauliflower, broccoli, and carrots. Um, and so this is the uh, amounts they spend for those items. And then this is the amount that they spend in 2021. Um, this is 2020 and this is 2021. Calculate the price of one unit of each vegetable in one year. So, okay. Uh, that would be a simple division. Um, I'm not sure why they think. Or is he do 200 divided by 175 divided by 50, 50 divided by 500, and then repeat that here. Um, uh, <laughs> um, the only reason why I'm just um, I'm not sure what I'm I'm not I'm, I'm not trying to belittle anyone, but that's a pretty dumb question to ask um i'm not asking it um it's obviously chosen by someone else more powerful than me to resign this question that's a bad question because that's just simple division that has nothing to do with economics now let's talk about something that has something to do with economics using 2020 as the base year calculate the cpi for each each year okay so what that means is that we then, if 2020 is the base year, that's going to be the year that determines the um, quantities. So that would mean um, after you've done the math, I guess, of what each item costs, right? So here in 2020, cauliflower costs two bucks, um, broccoli. Costs the dollar fifty, and then carrots cost the ten cents. Now, what so those are the prices in twenty twenty. Then you would presumably do the same for 2021. That would be 225 divided by 75. So now cauliflower is three bucks. Um, broccoli is dollar fifty still. And now carrots are 20 cents. Um, so what we would need to do here is we need the quantities. So the quantities we're going to use are the um, from the base here. So that would mean the quantities are for cauliflower 100, for broccoli uh, 50 and for carrots 500 so then CPI in year 2020 we need to calculate we already know what it is in the base year it's 100 because CPI is always 100 in the base year CPI in 2021 is going to equal total spending or total expenditures TE in 2021 over how much we spent total in 2020. TE in 2020 would be 2 times 100 carat price times the quantity plus $1.50 times 50 Plus 
500 times 0.1. I don't know if I'm just writing faster than the computer here. Um, so we calculate out that total expenditure. And then we would do the same for 2021. Sorry, my pen is just really slow here. I'm um, just waiting for it to catch up. So what you would presumably do is calculate those and then divide by it. Um, let's see what the answer key tells us. Um, so which one is this? This is the chapter, this is the wrong chapter here. Sorry, I have to go to where this is. Sorry, this is painful to have to you have to watch this, but it's the way it is. Uh, this is chapter 11. I, it's a horrible organization. Chapter 17, of course. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know exactly where. Yeah, let's look at it this way. Why not? Okay, let's look at this. Okay, so yeah, so they did exactly that, and that's how they got that math. Notice here that the quantities are staying the same. That's the key thing you need when you're calculating a CPI, is that the basket itself is not changing over time. And so then they do the math. And then calculating the percentage change, this would be a 46% change to go from 100 to 146. Okay, let's look at number three. Um, sorry, I can't get rid of the writing here. Or sorry, that, yeah, that we want to look at number three. Um, and it's not erasing it. Uh, oh, it really doesn't want to get rid of it. I'm sorry. Okay, well, let's try to read through what I wrote here. Um, suppose that... <laughs> Well, that doesn't make it any cleaner. So I'm sorry this looks so trashy. Um, let's just jump to number three. Um, suppose that people consume only three goods as shown in this table. Golf balls, tennis balls, and looks like Gatorade. Yeah. Um, and those are the prices and the quantities. What is the percentage change in the price of each of the three goods? Well, so here you'd be looking at what's the percentage change to go from 2 to 2, that's nothing. From 4 to 6, that's a 50% increase. From 1 to 2, that's a 100% increase. And I'm guessing... I'm guessing that's what they're going to do here. Yeah, 0, 50, 100. Now, we need to calculate the cost of the basket for each of those years. So that means cost of the basket is going to be determined by um, 
taking price times quantity. So I'm going to take price times quantity for each year. So it'd be in 2020, we're going to be 2 times 100 plus 4 times 100 plus 1 times 200. That's what you get right here. And then I would do the same in 2015, which would be, or I guess in this case, 2021, which would be 2 times 100 plus 6 times 100 plus 2 times 200. How sneaky is that, huh? So this is an older edition of the solutions. All they did is updated the years to confuse you and make you think the book is updated when all they really did is use the same numbers and just updated the year. That's pretty sneaky of them, huh? Using a method similar to CPI, calculate the percentage change in the overall price. So here, um, what that means is that we're taking the price. So look at what happened here. The basket went from a cost of $800 to $1,200. So to calculate CPI in 2014, if that was the base year, or in this case, 2020, if that was the base year, it would just be 800 divided by 800. Base year, CPI is always 100. Because the number is the same in the numerator and denominator. Then in 2021, or in this case, 2015, um, we're dividing the price of the basket in 2021 by the price of the basket in 2020. So it'd be 1,200 over 800, 150. So now that's a 50% increase. And you see this here. Okay, and then we learned that a bottle of Gatorade has increased from so, increased in size. How would that information in fact, uh, affect your calculation of the inflation rate? Well, it would make inflation not seem so bad, right? Because you're actually getting more ounces of Gatorade now for that same price. So if anything, you would now have an overstatement or overestimate um, of inflation. So that, and that's exactly what it's saying here would lower my estimation of inflation rate. So I would agree with that. Um, and then you've got new flavors. How would that affect your calculation of the inflation rate? It shouldn't affect it at all. Really? Okay, well, I'm not sure I disagree with this answer key. Um, This would be considered a change in quality. It would lower my estimate of it. No. Uh, dude. <laughs> I don't know who made this. This person gets it wrong. I'm going to take off some points on this person. If you put that down, it's fine. I, I'm not, I can't. It doesn't affect the inflation rate. There's nothing about changing the flavor that's going to affect anything about it. Um it's not like letter C where you have more per more ounces because now the bottle itself is different. Just a different flavor in the same 12 ounce bottle. You're still, I mean, unless it actually costs more to make a different flavor, that would, might change things a little bit, but just having a different flavor, who cares about what the quality would be? That has no effect. I don't think a different flavor is a change in quality. Um, so I disagree. Six, seven, and eight. Let's look at those. Okay, so for six, seven, and eight, um, now what we're talking about here is um, CPI's got some, sorry, again, I cannot erase this. CPI's got several problems. How are each of these um, situations dealt with? Well, if you have new inventions, any new invention, um, it's not gonna be in the CPI for several years. So the problem is that the consumer price index isn't gonna take into account these new, more expensive goods. Um, then if we're talking about the introduction of airbags to cars, it makes cars more expensive, but the car itself is um, um, safer. So in, if anything, it's going to overstate um, any inflation problems that we have for vehicles. Increased personal computer purchases in response to their decline in price. Um, 
Well, the problem here is that the CPI is a fixed basket. So if people are actually buying more computers, you're not going to see that in the CPI because we presume they buy the exact same amount all the time. More scoops of raisins in each package of Raisin Bran? Well, we're only counting the box of Raisin Bran itself. So we're not actually going to see um, the raisin cost or how many raisins are in the Raisin Bran. We're just going to see a box of Raisin Bran. And then in uh, the last part, greater use of fuel efficient cars after gasoline price increase. We're going to presume that people are still buying the same number of cars. So um, in this case, um, you're not going to, um, you're, you're not going to see people buying less gas. Um, so you're going to have a little bit of an overstatement in uh, the inflation rate. Let's go and see what the answers say and see if that's introduction new good, unmeasured quality change, substitute. Okay, well, that's all true. What, what's all saying being said here is true. Um, I, I can't disagree with it. Uh, let's look at number seven. Okay, in number seven, we're told what eggs cost in January 1980, then what they cost in January 2018. It's the same quantity, dozen eggs. And then we're told what the wages of a worker in 1980 versus 2018. And we're asked by what percentage did price of eggs rise? So let's just start with that one first. Um, that would be new minus old over old times 100. Uh, in this case, the numbers are different. It's not $2 minus 15 cents. It would be um, $1.77 minus 88 cents. So again, don't, don't worry about the specific numbers. The same process would be followed here. Um, sorry, I can't, it won't let me right here, but this would be $1.77 right here. And then this would be 88 cents divided by 88 cents times 100, you would get a number right here. Then in terms of the wages, you would have 2236, 2236 minus 657 divided by 657 times 100 would equal some number. And then what you're doing here in letter C, what you're doing is for 1980 and 2018, you're dividing the price of the good, in this case, the price of eggs in 1980, and you're dividing it by um, the wage divided by 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour. And that's going to give you the sense of their productivity, um, of how long it takes to buy a certain good. So in this case, it took an individual 2.7 minutes to buy the average egg. And in 2011, it took them 5.2 minutes. You'd be able to do the same calculation with the answers, um, with, the, with the data that we have. And what you see here is that purchasing power fell. It's taking an individual almost twice as long to buy the same good. And you'd be able to make that same kind of conversation point um, here. And then the last one, uh, number eight. Um, so here we're looking at, um, you know, for an elderly person, if they consume the same basket, um, does is Social Security um, providing for their needs? And then what happens if they're consuming different products um, than others? <laughs> so... In general, what we would say is that if Social Security provides people um, exactly the CPI, we would say that they have a improvement in their standard of living because the CPI tends to overstate the actual inflation. So that's why in letter A, we would say they'd be better off. Now, in letter B, if we think that elderly people are buying different goods than the typical individual, then it could... Be, they could be better off or worse off. But if they're buying health care, 
which is actually even more expensive, then they would be probably worse off. Okay. I hope that kind of helps you understand um, chapter 11.